Good luck. Um, Thank and you. I'll hand you over. For anyone in the audience, you can uh, scan the QR code, go to the URL if you want to ask questions and participate. Um, and we'll ask those questions at the end if any come through. We will also ask uh, via a raised hand if you'd rather do it that way. So with that, over to Biliana. Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for joining my session. Uh, I want to give you a little bit of a talk about the journey of building one of the biggest global agile community, cross industry and geography. But before that, just to start, it's culture eats strategy for breakfast. So there are a lot, many CIOs, many, uh, yeah, true, yeah. <laughs> it's, there's so many strategies every year, a CIO, a CEO will come and talk about how they want to change the, uh, the company, how they want to m make the company agile, making it smaller, nimble, but it kind of doesn't happen because the culture is not changed. So, um, just to introduce myself a little bit, I am an enterprise agile coach. I live and breathe value creation, customer focus, and high performing team. And the reason for that is I always think what do we do, what is the value we build, doesn't matter what we are creating. And this is what I also did with the Lean Agile Coffee Connect. So, do you know, have you heard about TCS? No. So, uh, let me tell you a little bit of TCS. So, we are a very big company. We are about 600,000 people globally. We have about 2,000 clients, and you can read the rest online. However, it's a community. Uh, building a community is not easy. Where do you start? What do you do? Who do you invite? How do you find the people that are really interesting of an agile topic? And agile is something that everybody talks about it. But when you, how do you drag them to a channel? And uh, we are also in uh, Europe. We are about 25 countries, and you can see that we have about 100 nationality. Having online community, it's really important to tailor made for the 100 nationalities because people uh, read and access content in a different way. People are different. So some people are very visual. Some people are, want to read the story. Some people want to go and find additional information. So it's important to think about how can we create the culture of agile? How can we start being talking small, talking about customer first, talking about um, value creation? And you can see this is a. TCS, where we have uh, 1,100 delivery centers, and we have many engagements. But when you go to such a big company, you start thinking about, so who do I talk to? Who are the experts? Who can give me an advice? And this is why I created the company. So we just spoke before we started. It's there, there's so many times the company says, let's build a community of practice. Or let's create a community where people will come, they enjoy, they will learn, and they will share information. However, doesn't really happen in practice. In practice, it becomes that couple of people get together, and two, three months later, they get a little bit bored because no one comes. No one actually is involved. So this is what I did. It's, I started my first thought was, how can I think about a small community of practice where even if we are 10 people, even if we are 20 people, we can get together and talk about Agile. I'm a little bit obsessed with Agile, so therefore Agile is something that I can talk to one person, I can talk to 100 people. So what we did first, we built uh, five meetups. I love meetups because meetups are very focused event, an event where you go and talk. People have specially come because they're interested of the topic. So this is where we started. And then uh, in the same time, 
TCS was recognized as the uh, as the one of the largest scale enterprise agility. But there are people coming to the company. There are people leaving the company. There are people that learning a lot about agility. There are people that have no clue about it. So what I decided to do at the time is why do we not create a monthly forum, a, a, a time where we can come face to face and talk about Agile. So we did few brown bag sessions, lunch and learn. However, COVID came. And the COVID was when we suddenly, everything was very, very gloomy. And everybody was talking about how do we um, talk to each other. Everybody was in front of their computer and actually not cooperating. So what I thought at that time, it's we still need to grow, we still need to talk about Agile, and we need uh, still need to collaborate. So what I decided at that time is, let's try a virtual community where my viewers, if I only have 10 people coming to us, and just chatting, let's have a chat. It will be amazing because still 10 people, I can learn from them, they can learn from me. So where I all started online was the Lean Coffee Connect. I got inspired by that because it's a event where you, it's a agendaless event, an event where you ask people to come and do questions uh, uh, and after you rate the question, you vote them, and the top three, four questions, you talk about it. So this was invented in 2009, long time before the virtual uh, world. However, it's absolutely valid still, where you vote on your top questions and you then talk about it. However, what I found out is that just having questions was not good enough because having a questions was something that uh, they were coming the same question. What is Agile? How do we do Agile? What is a Scrum Master? And all of this basic stuff. So the expert, the ones that they had really a knowledge, they will not come because they will get fed up of listening the same thing. So what I decided, all of uh, this community is fail and learn fast and continue learning. And what I did is I always built something like this structure. So the first, I begin with an icebreaker. And I actually really like there is an icebreaker um, uh, boot over there where you can play a small game online. And I do an icebreaker, what made you smile, any icebreaker. So we do an icebreaker so people get relaxed. People get like a little bit chill after some stressful conversation and back-to-back -back meetings. Then what I found out is that we need to have a talk. People, people come to talks because they want to learn something. So just questioning was not enough. So I started uh, getting people to come and give a talk. And what I try to do is I try to have uh, strategic talks, I try to have also very operational talks. And, but what I found out is that the community comes, but they, they, they do multitasking. Most of the people that do virtual uh, events, they do something else. They're not in the present. So what I uh, discovered is that if I do quiz in the beginning, people really start paying attention because they're finding out that they might not know the topic as much as they thought. So therefore, first I do quiz, then I, do, I call it a flash view, a flash view on specific topic, and then we go and do the Coffee Connect. And you can see people there from everywhere globally. So again, nationalities, how people uh, get the content is super important. And then this is kind of a little bit statistic. I always, what you measure, you learn and you improve. So this is my statistic where we started in the beginning. I had about 20 people. And actually, I think I got to about 15 people showing up. And then suddenly I thought, OK, I can use the team's channel. I can use a little bit of marketing. I can build the channel 
to be a place where people can come and learn about Agile. And you can see it, it has grown. And currently, it's about 40 to 60 people coming to the session. And those are some of the topics that we talk about. Some of them are very, very basic. What do we do? Well, how do you form a team? But some of them are much more strategic. So what I try to do is to always have different topics. So people are getting interest. Also what I do, if I hear anyone that gives a great talk, I ask them to come and do a talk. I also have done external talks. There are a couple of external talks that have been amazingly, incredibly good and interesting. Uh, so we have had three years of the community. And this is some of the thank you note for the community. And for me, I'm still after three years thinking about if one person show up and we exchange ideas and we are happy and we have a good time, why not? So my, my view hasn't changed. I still love just meeting new people and talking about Agile. This is a little bit about how I started structuring the conversation on the Teams channel. So we actually have a mascot, which no longer it's a little chicken. It now has four or five brothers, and it's a big chicken. But there are people, they come and say, how is our mascot? We name the mascot. I always ask them for feed I always ask after every session for a feedback. We have now held about 67 sessions, and we are 25,000 people on the channel. Of course, no one, not everyone comes, but I have about 1,000 people coming to the channel on a daily basis. And uh, what also I built is I built a common repository, common knowledge. And this is something that is very, people come to learn, people come to get inspired. So I have a place where all the sessions are um, saved, but I have also materials. I have also, if I find something that it's about learning about uh, uh, st st uh, statistics, I put it there. Uh, I also have a bookcase, our share bookcase, collective bookshelf where if I get a good book, I just put it there. And it can be on anything. But again, it's a place where people get inspired. It can be also, my recent post on the channel was about Excel formulas. My, the, the post before that, it's one of the um, books about comparing, a post comparing three of the big companies if they talk about Agile. So it can be anything. But I, I, I kind of build the content of people can come and uh, um, get inspired and learn. The other thing what I have also done, it's again to grab the content, uh, to grab the people and come to get inspired is, I thought about the logo. So I had a logo from uh, like, as we all do, got a picture from online and put it on the channel. But then I said, why not? Let's put, um, let's create a logo with one of our members doing that. So I actually created a competition, asked the community to come up and propose a logo. They propose a logo, and this is our logo. The other thing I recently read about automation testing is a product you are creating uh, if it's changing all the time. What about your investment in technology and automation testing? And it's very good checkpoints. It's very, very good checkpoints for the teams to understand, are we going the right direction? So I do a lot of polls. And again, I try to build a content where everyone can get inspired. So lastly, this is I replicate the same uh, type of a channel, the same framework to one of my customers. And what I discovered is you really need to have uh, inspect, adapt, a lot of courage and a passion. You need to constantly thinking what you're updating as a content, what you are driving, how are your community coming to the channel, and what you are really doing. And what I found out is that my customer has never had the channel before. And you can see that 
we had about a thousand people on average, like three, four hundred people coming to the channel every day. But again, it's a new channel, it's a new place where you really need to find out what this company with the culture they really want to listen to. So again, a new place, a new channel doesn't mean that it's the same. So you can't replicate it. So Couch Eat Strategy for Breakfast, I absolutely believe that. And I believe that it's important to learn, adapt, change, and uh, continue to be passionate for what you're doing. So thank you very much. And uh, yeah, what do we do? <laughs> Thank you very much. That was really interesting. Um, we've got a few questions in. So, okay. Uh, oh. Let's start at the top. So community management moderation is a full-time job. How many people manage your community? So this is my fourth kind of type of job. So I'm an agile coach. I go to uh, my customers. So this is, I do maybe three hours a week. This is it. So, yeah, but I have become, I, I have learned a lot about what do I want. So if I go back to the, so I know exactly how my session is. So I know exactly when I ask people to come and prepare the, doc, uh, the slides. I also know Slido, where people have to go to ask questions. So everything, it, it has run the same for three years. So one of the important things that I would um, uh, recommend, you don't change the timing of a session, you don't change the uh, some uh, tools you're using. Every time you change a tool, people start not using it. So I have everything set up and I use like, yeah, maybe two to three hours max, but this is not my job. My, 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 uh, leadership will say, oh, okay, this is on the side. It's now running on its own. Okay, that's, so it's, it's what, three hours of one person. That's pretty impressive. Um, and what about the sessions? With frequency, how often are they run? So there are two things. One is the online, which is the channel, which what I have done is I post every, every second, every third day. So when I have time, I just dump stuff in. Whoever is interested, they can read it. Whoever is not interested, they can read it. The actual session is bi-weekly because of not so much there is no interest. It's more because I don't have time to do more often. And what I found, as they were saying on the other stage, content is the king. You really need to find the right content. Otherwise it uh, becomes polluted, it becomes not interesting. So I always experimentize with the content. Okay. And finally, um, alongside the, being the tech that's actually being used to run the meetings, what other technology do you use to maintain the community between the events? So how do you, how do you sort of fill in it's, those gaps? It's always Teams channel, it's always the Teams. And this is where now it's the challenge because half of my company have moved to Google chat and suddenly I have built the community for three years and suddenly half of my company have no access to teams so I have to restart the whole thing so it's um, again for me it's if two people join we will be amazing and this is my motto Thank you so much. Um, you do have a lot of events, obviously, and a lot of content yeah. that is going on on that platform and so on. How do you communicate every time there is something new? Like, how do you send emails? Do they have notification system? Because I can see my community being overwhelmed by yeah. all of those information. So. so I today got a message of person saying, there are too many messages on Teams. Can you, can you get me out of there? And this is, it's a risk. But I also have a lot of people where they actually say, oh, I didn't know about it. So it's, you need to be brave. You need to be pushing uh, limits and you need to want to have it and kind of ask for forgiveness. Don't ask for permission. It's my way where I have built it. And anyone that doesn't want to be on a community, they can opt out. 
but most of the people don't know for existing of the community. And the other thing is, I have a spreadsheet where I think, okay, which one should I do next time? And to be honest, the sessions, I build them of my own selfishness reason to learn. So I'm like, do I want to learn a little bit about strategy? Do I get to want to inspire? Let's do that. Do I have, am I working on something that I'm really having a little bit of uh, understanding what else is happening? Let's do that. So a lot of it is also selfish reason of me learning. <laughs> but, but again, it's because I'm an agile coach, it's kind of anything with agile, but it cannot be basic only or strategy only because the leadership will not come to every event and the people that are on the ground and do, working in a team, they will not come because they're too busy. So you have to have a mixture of interesting topics. Okay, any more questions from the floor? No? Well, thank you very much, Biliana. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you Great very job. much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.